All right, what is the IC of the day? Chip of the day. What should I call these series? The chip of the day? Um, we're going to be looking at a 74123. Okay? Uh, probably don't see a lot of these anymore, but back in the day they were everywhere and I think everybody hated them. <laughs> I know I did. I hated these things. They were always in the circuit for dumb reasons and they always drifted off and uh, they were sometimes hard to figure out what they were trying to accomplish anyway. Didn't like these things. But what they do is uh, they, let's see, I'll write on the back of this. They, they take an edge, let's say you have an edge, all right? And from that edge, they create a pulse, okay? And it can either be a rising edge or a falling edge, and you get a pulse. And uh, the chip has a negative output as well. So it either, either you can have a rising edge or you can have a falling edge and you can either generate a positive pulse or negative pulse. So that's what the chip does. It creates a pulse. And uh, you set the width of the pulse by an RC time constant. Oops. By an RT, RC time constant. Okay. So that's what we will look at today. So reading the data sheet, um, it does give you some clues. Um, there are is a data sheet that has multiple parts on it. So a lot of times you'll see multiple parts on a data sheet. So don't get confused. You'll, you'll look at this and you say, oh, here's the pinout. And you'll start to wire it up. This is a pinout only for the 122 part. The 123 part has an entirely different pinout. So be careful about that. Um, and uh, yeah, so you could get confused right away. Um, let's see, this is, oh, I'm sorry. This is the one, so I'm confused already. This is the 122 part. And this is the 123 part, so they're both on the same page, and yeah, they have completely different pinouts. So uh, this is the one that we are interested in. This is the this is the pinout that we're going to use. All right. So the 122 chip has a single. They're called uh, monostable monostable vibrators, um, but they just output a pulse, and they're retriggerable anyway. Uh, much stuff I'm not going to cover today, but. Um, the 122 has some extra goodies inside. The 123 is a dual. It has two of them in there. Um, and uh, the input is protected with a Schmidt trigger, it says here. Uh, they're provided enough Schmidt hysteresis to ensure jitter-free triggering. So even though the signal, uh, let's see, I'm not saying this right. Even though the diagram doesn't show a Schmidt input, they say it has kind of a quasi Schmidt input, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, this is the 122 part. It has multiple inputs. It has OR gate and an AND gate and a clear. So it has a lot of inputs. So you can have conditional, a condition that creates the pulse. So certain conditions have to, have to occur for this pulse to occur. These have to be low, these have to be high, and the clear has to be high. And then it'll go through. If the clear is low, it just kind of locks the thing down and won't do anything. And then you apply a, an R and a C and it creates the pulse. We're, but we're going to be using this one. This is the 123 part. And the reason we're going to be using that one is I have a lot of them. <laughs> so we're going to use that one. Um, and they're the more popular one. If you look at circuits, you'll always see a 123. I don't think I've ever seen a 120. And maybe, maybe, a, maybe a 122, but I didn't see many of them. So this one only has a condition of two, either uh, A, so it's an AND gate. So A has to be low and B has to be high. And then this thing will fire. C has to be high. And then there's a, a, a RC on the output for the set the, uh, set the pulse width. So how do you set the pulse width? Uh, well, you look at the little diagram here. They give you an equation. They give you an equation, but I don't look at equations. I always look at the little pictures. I like picture books. <laughs> so it says here, timing capacitors are sort of in the range of 1 to uh, 1,000 picofarads. I looked in my junk, and I've got a whole bunch of 120. So we're going to be operating about here. We have about 120 um, picofarads. All right. And I'll, uh, then I looked at the range of, of uh, resistors, and there's a 10K in here. That's my favorite one, so I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use the uh, 10K. So the way that you read this is this points to these series of curves. So we're going to be looking at this second, second curve, and we will come here, and we're going to be about right there, okay? 
will be about right there. We can go across and we can read it and it's gonna be right around four or 500 nanoseconds. So we should expect to see about uh, four or 500 nanoseconds. Uh, 500 actually, let's see here, seven, dun, dun. I'm gonna read this really, really careful. I'll say four, five, 550. I claim 550 nanoseconds from, from this diagram. Okay, and so we're gonna hook this thing up. So how are we gonna hook it up? Well, let's see here, we're going to, uh, we're going to tie this uh, high and we're gonna tie this high and we're gonna take this over to a 555 and generate a clock. Okay, so the clock's gonna come in here. We're gonna be looking at the scope probe on Q and then we're gonna be putting in a uh, 10K and 120 picofarad, okay? And we're gonna wire those in like this, okay? So your 10K is here and your 120 picofarads is here and that's how you wire it. Now you can make it do different things by putting in a diode or hooking it up different ways. So it's all in the data sheet, but we're gonna do it the simple way. This is the way that most of the time you'll see it. All right. Okay, so let's go over and look at our little circuit here. So here's our 555 and here's our 123. And let's go up to the scope and see what we can see. Okay, so the uh, yellow trace is the uh, 555 and the blue trace is the pulse. And I think you can just see there's a pulse there and there's a pulse there. So it's set up to fire on negative edges, okay? So if I zoom in this negative edge, you can start to see the pulse. There it is. So it's generating, it's generating that pulse when a negative edge happens, okay? And um, let's see here. There's 500 nanoseconds per division, so 500, and this is uh, 1,000, so it's about 700 nanoseconds, about 700 nanoseconds wide. So we were pretty close. Of course, our values, our, our capacitor is probably going to be off a bit, our resistor might be off a bit and stuff. But anyway, there you go. And they weren't all that accurate, like I say. A lot of times they would drift off with temperature or just with age and stuff and uh, they could move around and then your circuit didn't work any longer. If, you're, if you were counting on that being exactly 500 nanoseconds, you know, it, and it was, a, you know, if, if it was a little bit short, or a little bit long, it could mess up all of your logic. And yeah, it was a bad deal. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Um, let's say that we wanted to uh, develop that edge on the rising on the rising edge uh, well we could do that easily we could um, move the input to pin 2 and we can ground pin 1 and now we've inverted the incoming logic and come back here and now the little pulses are happening on the positive edge so now I need to uh, trigger on positive edges. There we go. And I can zoom in on that. So now we have a positive edge coming in and we get a, uh, oops, we get a 700, 700 nanosecond pulse coming out. So anyway, there you go, chip of the day. Um, nobody does this anymore. Everybody's just gonna use microprocessors these days, but you might see this in, uh, something you're repairing, so that will be valuable. Um, and uh, you, you might figure, say, oh, 123, what does a 123 do, do? And why is there a resistor and a capacitor? And you might first look at it and you think, oh, the capacitor is a bypass capacitor, and oh, that's just a pull-up resistor. No, they're actually setting up a timing equation in the, uh, in the part, so there you go.